Okay, working on 13.5 liter John Deere, goes on a 95.60 RT. Just getting ready now to set the injector preload. I've already torqued down all of my rocker arm shaft bolts. They're torque turned. Have my timing pin in at top dead center number one. This is the other timing pin that goes in the crankshaft where there's a slot in the crankshaft. That's how you get top dead center. I usually mark the flywheel so I know right where I'm at when I come back around on my full revolution. But I just wanted to show you real quick how you set injector preload. So you back this off, this nut off, until you can freewheel the roller. The roller is freewheeling. Then you tighten this down just until it makes contact that, that there's no pressure on it. You just got to make it so it makes contact. Right now I can just barely turn this. So that's just making contact. Then you take your Allen screw here and you go one half a turn in. So you go one half a turn and then you're going to lock your jam nut back down. That sets preload on this injector right here. Saying, when we say that, that means that when it comes around on its lobe that it doesn't have, it's in this flat part of, part of its lobe, this isn't bouncing. It has enough preload on it because of the spring in here to hold it in place. Then we're going to adjust our intakes and exhausts as we're going around. Because if you look, it's going to be hard to kind of see here. If you look at the camshaft right there, there are notches in that camshaft. And this is a thing, if, because I rebuilt the engine, I knew where number one cylinder was, I'm on top dead center. But if you wanna ever find it, when you start this, there's a double notch right there. That double notch has to be at about 11 o'clock. And that's when you know this slot right here where I'm at right now, if that's at 11, you are at top dead center on number one, firing. As you can see right there, that is the pickup sensor for the camshaft. So that knows, it's telling the ECU when it's coming around and it's doing its firing. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust these. These are at, exhausts are at 26, intakes are at 12. You have your bridge right here that is already in. Now, I wanted to say that also, there are two different style bridges that are available, were available on these engines. Some have a slot cut in right here. So you would actually stick what we call an ignition feeler gauge. It's thin. It's a real thin one where these are wide. It would be a thinner ignition feeler gauge that would go right in there underneath that valve tip, the stem, and this right here. These don't. These are solid all the way around. So you check your clearance right here underneath this. Sometimes you have to cock these up a little bit. You have to get them up a little bit to get them to go in there. And again, it's just like any other, setting any other valves on any engine. I'm gonna need two hands for this, but I'm not gonna grab two hands because then I gotta drop the phone and well, then you guys go flying. Uh, it's just, it's just, okay, that's it. It's just like setting any other engine. Turn the screw down till you can just, you have good tension on your feeler gauge, tighten the jam nut. Then we rotate and we go right around by the book I can't remember it off the top of my head. There's probably some guys who can have it memorized as it's working. I, I can't, so I go by the book. But we're going to go ahead and set all these valves and rocker arms and the injector preload. And then this engine is ready to get set back into that mule right there. 